Welcome to LabMist.com in our lab video series in BGP. You can find a complete list of BGP video on our website by clicking on the link above and sign up for our newsletters to receive the latest video updates. As you know, multicast routing relies on unicast routing table to determine where the source of the multicast traffic should be coming from. This is called reverse path checked or RPF and it is a mechanism to prevent routing loops. What this means is your multicast routing topology has to line up with your unicast routing topology. What if you want multicast traffic to be routed through a different path? This is where multicast BGP comes in assuming that you're running BGP in your network. In this video, we will be configuring multicast BGP. So we start our lab with configuring some basic multicast routing using a sparse and dense mode and then we can configure multicast source and destination so we can have uh, something to test in our lab. And then we look at how we can use the multicast BGP to give us the routing flexibility. We're going to make a slight addition to our physical topology so the main portion of our router connections R1 through R7 remains the same at the middle but we're going to add on the top here a link between R6 to our switch 1 that we're going to use the switch 1 to source our multicast traffic. Now for our layer 3 topology we already have the IBGP and EBGP connections built among R1 and R7 with their lead back 10 through 12 advertised into the BGP. So what we're adding here is the multicast as source which is the switch one at the top and we're going to be configuring R5 here at the bottom as our multicast destination and we're going to enable PIM connections along the way from R6, R3, R1 down to R5 with the R1 being the rendezvous point since we're going to be running a sparse dense mode. Okay so the goal of this lab is to see what happened when we start changing the unicast routing topology and see how that would affect our multicast routing and see how we can fix that with the multicast BGP configuration. So let's get started with our task number one, basic multicast. So we first have to configure multicast routing on R1, R3, R5, and R6 using sparse dense mode. And then using the auto RP, we have to configure R1 to be our rendezvous point sourcing from this loopback 10. Okay, so let's start off with our R1. That's also going to be our rendezvous point. First command is to enable multicast routing with the IP multicast routing. And then we need to make sure that all the interfaces that's going to be participating in multicast has the multicast routing enable with the PIM command. So start off with the loopback 10 since that's going to be our source interface for a rendezvous point. So the command is IP PIM. You can see you have an option between sparse dense, sparse, and dense mode. Here we're going to be using a sparse dense. And then R1 has a fast Ethernet that we need to enable also with the PIM sparse stand as well as a serial that's facing R5. Okay, now we're going to have to configure R1 to advertise itself as a rendezvous point with, with the auto RP. So the command for that is send RP announce sourcing from loopback 10 and then you can define the scope as far as how far you want the packet to travel and here we can just going to pick a number let's say 16 hops and then you can even go beyond that and define a group list as far as what you want the R1 to be a rendezvous point for for the group and then you can also uh, refine the interval as well. We're just going to use a default setting for that which is being a rendezvous point for all groups with the default interval. Okay, another command that we need is for R1 to advertise itself as a candidate for the auto RP and that with the send RP discovery command, again sourcing from loopback 10 and scope of 16. So basically R1 is acting as both auto RP candidate and the mapping agent. Okay, so if you do show IP PIM, just to check, RP mapping. So you can see that it's seeing itself being a source of 1101 has been elected as a rendezvous point through an auto RP. Okay, and this is for all the multicast group 224 slash 4 Okay, so that's the, the configuration we need for now for R1. Next, we're going to move on to our router 3 that's going to have a PIM connection to R6 and R1. Okay, so let's jump over to router 3. Again, we're going to do multicast routing and then we'll enable IP PIM sparse dense on fast 00, zero as well as the serial interface. 
that's facing R6. Okay, next we're going to go over to R5 down here that has the PIM connection to R1. So here's our R5, IP multicast routing, and then serial interface with the IP PIM sparse dense. Okay, I'm just going to go ahead and jump over to R6 and complete our multicast routing configuration. Then we're just going to go back and do a quick check as far as the PIM neighbor adjacency as well as the how they see the rendezvous point being advertised. Okay, so again, multicast routing on R6. And for R6, with the serial interface connecting to R3, we enable PIM sparse dense. Have to give it a second. Let's go back and check on R3 with show IP PIM RP mapping. You can see that the R3 has already received the announcement of the RP coming from R1. And we can also do the same check on R5. Show IP PIM RP map. You can see that R5 is seeing the same thing. And let's do the last check on R6. Looks like it hasn't quite come in yet. But at least a PIM neighbor has already come up for R6 with R3. And there you go. Now the R6 also have the rendezvous point uh, mapping to R1. Okay, so that should be all we need to do for uh, task number one. Okay, now let's move on to task number two now that we have a basic multicast routing enable on our routers. Now we're going to have to configure or define our multicast source and destination. Now for the multicast source, we're going to configure a VRF on switch one with the name R6 and a route distinguisher of six colon six. And then we're basically going to configure the link that uh, I showed earlier right here in the physical topology between switch one fast 06 and R6 fast 00. And that's going to have a subnet of 6660 slash 24. Okay, so that's what this task right here is asking us to do. And then we have to configure R6 fast 00 with the IP and then enable PIM sparse dense mode. And we have to make sure that R6 advertise that particular subnet to the BGP so the rest of the network knows about that subnet as well. Now for our destination, we're just going to join our R5 loop back 10 to the multicast group that we use here, which is 239111. So the source is going to be at the top and the destination is going to be at the bottom. Okay, so let's first start our configuration on switch one. And we said we need to create a VRF call R6 with a route distinguisher, which is RD. You can see specified route distinguisher, RD 6 colon 6. Okay, and then we're going to have to enable, if not already, IP routing on this switch. And don't forget to enable IP Ceph as well. Okay, now on fast Ethernet 06. We're going to configure that as a routed port, so we need to do no switch port. Join that to the VRF using the IP VRF forwarding, R6. IP address 666.6 and then slash 24. Okay, so if you guys are wondering why I'm creating a VRF on switch one, we are using switch one on multiple places in our lab here. So just to create like an isolated test environment that we can use for to source our multicast source. That's why we are just reusing the same switch and provide a layer three logical separation using the VRF. All right, so we can check by using a show IP VRF. And we currently have our six right here with the member interface of zero six. Okay, now that we have configured switch one, next we're gonna configure R6 fast zero zero which is connected to the switch one port six. Give it an IP of 6661 slash 24. And then enable IP PIM sparse dense and do a no shut. Okay, so we should be able to ping from R6 to switch one, which is 6666. Okay, you can see that's pingable. All right, to finish off our R6, we have to advertise a subnet into the BGP. So we do router BGP 200, just to show you guys what we have currently with the router BGP 200. Okay, so we got 
a regular BGP configuration with the network command that's currently advertised R6 loopback 10 through 12, and then just basic neighbor uh, BGP neighbor commands. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and do another network command for 6660 mass 255255550. All right, so that's for R6. Now we're going back to R5. Since R5 is going to be our multicast destination, so we're going to have to configure R5 to join the multicast group from its loopback 10. So we configure IP PIM sparse dense. And then to force it to join the group, we use command IP IGMP join group. And then the IP of the group that the router would like to join. And as soon as I press enter, what's going to do is R5 is going to send out a pin message to the rendezvous point requesting for a multicast traffic for that particular group. Okay, so at this point, if you go back to our rendezvous point, which is R1, and do a show IP M route for the group, which is 239.1.1.1. You can see that currently R1 has a share tree for 239.1.1.1 with the outgoing interface pointing towards R5, which is a serial 001. Okay, and this is because R1 has received a multicast or a PIM request from R5. Okay, so since we're on R1 already, let's do a show IP VGP 6660 and see where it's pointing to currently. So R1 is currently pointing towards R3 for, for that particular subnet. And if you go back to R5, show IP BGP 6660, you can see there R5 is currently pointing to R1 for that subnet. Okay, so you can see currently as far as the routing topology, let me kind of bring up the pane right here that I can draw. So R1 is pointing to R3 and R5 is pointing to R1 for this particular subnet right here. So as far as the unicast routing topology, the path looks like this. Okay, and we can verify that by going back to R5 and do a RPF, so show IP RPF, and then you specify the IP address you want to perform a reverse path check, which is 6660. Zero in our case, and you can see that RPF neighbor is currently pointing to R1 out of a serial 00, zero colon 0. And we can do the same thing on R1 just to make sure that we have a complete RPF check, our successful RPF check. You can see R1 is pointing to R3, and on R3 is pointing to R6. So currently we have a valid RPF checked along the way from R6, R3, R1 down to R5. Okay, what it means is if we now generate some multicast traffic from switch one, so we're just going to do a simple ICMP or ping. And since we're operating under the VRF on switch one, we have to specify VRF R6, and then we can ping 239.1.1.1. And you can see that we are receiving a reply from our recipient, which is uh, currently R5. Okay, it's replying using it's a sort uh, serial interface right here. And just to make sure it's uh, a multicast traffic is working, so we can always do a repeat and make sure that we keep getting a ICMP reply back from R5, which we are. Okay, so we know that our multicast routing is currently working properly. And that finishes up our task number two.